But then we all learn by experience, do we not? Yeah. We've all had regrets in life. We've all had, why did I say that? Why did I do that? How did I get here? Every one of us has had those moments. This is part of the learning curve, part of the learning process that we go through. Is it good or bad? No, it just is. It just is. You know, you are your own judge and jury here. What Edgar Casey was able to do in his sleep was tap into the Akashic records, God's remembrance. See, every word that's ever been spoken, every musical note that's ever been played, every thought is recorded in this God's remembrance, in this great mind of God. And here's the interesting thing that spiritualism teaches us, that we can all attune to this. If we let go, we let go. Yeah? Just let go. What's our biggest fear? Our biggest fear is what happens. I remember having a, I was reading a book here, this has been a few years back, on when you meditate, to do it at the exact same time every day, and, um, and to do it kind of in the same location with the same thought, etc., etc. Well, what happened to me was I did this. I got up at 5 o'clock every morning, and I meditated in the same chair, in the same spot, with the same prayers and the same thoughts and everything. And all of a sudden, one morning, I had this out-of-body type experience where I actually left <coughs> this body and was hovering above myself in the room. And I could see everything in the room as vividly as I'm seeing you right now. Okay? And... This lasted, I don't know, an indefinite amount of time, but all of a sudden I got a little spooked with what had just happened to me, so I came back. You know what I mean? And it was like, oh, whoa. Um, thought about that for days, but I had given in, you see. So you've got to give in. You want to spiral upward toward that creator, not come back anymore. It's got to be bliss up there, I guess then you got to let go, but you got to trust. And in the book here it says, I'm certain that all human beings have much greater powers than they're ever aware of, provided they're willing to pay the price of detachment from self-interest, which is required to develop those powers or abilities. The detachment. Does this make sense? Some of this makes sense to you? Yeah. Uh, the reader may be assured that no reading exists in which Edgar Casey infers that sections of the Bible have been re-edited with malice or forethought. Uh, when he was asked if such things might be so, he replied that the spirit of the Bible was still whole and that its power laid in its spiritual strength and was not dependent on its literal content. Too many times in, in some of these secular religions, they want to make it the literal word that's it. You can't interpret it but this one way. And I learned that most of the uh, Baptist preachers preach out of the Old Testament. You know why they teach, preach out of the Old Testament? Because that was where all the hellfire and damnation and brimstone was, right? So that was their way of controlling you. And if this ever gets out to the rest of the world, they may be hunted down. I don't know for that, but um, it just... You know, it's just what it means. It's, it is what it is, guys. Um, that free will. You know, we've got it. God gave it to us. We came down here and maybe mucked it up a few times, but it's okay. It's okay. Um, on the other hand, Casey did not, in permissive sleep, deny that many sections had lost their original clarity in the course of their translations from Hebrew to Greek to Latin and Jacobi in English. And it says, A thorough study of the reading centered around the Palestine period of the time Christ reveals that they gave the Essenes far greater credit for preserving the true word. How many of you have heard of the Essenes? Yep, a few of you. Okay. The Essenes were that little Jewish sect that was hated by their own group. You know why? Kind of like the spiritualists of today. Many years ago, spiritualism was the rave. I mean, when the Fox sisters heard the knocks and everybody validated it, 
and said, yeah, this stuff's real. I mean, it was on like, we're, we're on like wildfire until the spiritualist said, yep, we talked to the dead. And Bible folks said, time out. What do you mean there's life after death? What do you mean there's, what do you mean you're talking to the dead? That, that just didn't go over. So spiritualism lost a little bit of its zeal, kind of like what happened with the Essenes here. It's just my take on that, but they were the ones that a lot believe, because of the Dead Sea Scrolls that were found back in the 50s, that they were the ones that manifested the coming of the Christ. Okay? That they were a hundred years before the coming of the Christ, they had actually predicted his coming. A hundred years. But it was preparation. What do we do as, as spiritualists? We're preparing ourselves, are we not? Like the, ver like the words, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. I was singing that earlier this morning. Pure and holy. My light is true. So hence, the group we refer here to as the Essenes was the outgrowth of the teachings of Melchizedek. How many of you know, I know some of you know, but how many of you know who Melchizedek was? Interesting thing about Melchizedek, he was neither with mother nor father, but he was the king of Salem, or the king of Jerusalem at the time of Abraham, one of our founding fathers of modern day religion, right? But Melchizedek, neither mother nor father. Well, who was he? I'll get to that in a second. Um, the, the first story that came along was the story of Bridie Murphy. And this is back in the turn of the century, where Bridie Murphy was actually um, a young Irish peasant that lived in the 18th century. And through hypnosis, she was brought out. And Steve and I have talked about hypnosis here in, in teaching you know, or, 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 or implementing hypnosis into what we do to help us reach in, to reach further in, to heal. It has a lot of powers. But the story of Bridie Murphy swept like wildfire because what happened was here was a modern day girl who was easily hypnotized and she went back to the 18th century and because of the, uh, because she was just a mere peasant, she was getting all this attention now, this isn't spirit, okay? I mean, going back, she was just bubbling with information. So, on, it says in here, Bridie, on first being allowed to express herself, was more delighted. She gossiped happily, flattered to be the center of attention she had never enjoyed in the flesh. Whoa. The work of Dr. Ian Stevenson. He headed the vanguard of responsible investigators seeking first-hand evidence of reincarnation, and he had journeyed as far as India, Ceylon, Lebanon, and Alaska. And in his studies, what he found um, was in India, he found a, small, a young boy uh, who at 18 had died tragically, and he had manifest himself or brought himself back into a two and a half year old boy. This is out there, stretching Ronnie's thoughts. But what was interesting was that this young two and a half year old told his mother about his girlfriend, his mother, and his aunt in another town. And when they actually went and investigated it, it was true. And can you imagine what Mama must have been thinking? Oh my gosh, because the boy had fallen sick at two and a half. So how this happened, how this body changed out of soul, I don't, I don't know. But it's enough to make you go, wow, isn't this worth investigating a little bit? Now, this book really kind of set me on my ear, and it was called Lives of the Master, the real story of the, the real story of the Jesus story, okay? And this was all transcribed and based on um, the, the readings that came from Edgar Casey. So here's some past lives, and I'm just going to be brief on these, but these are interesting because they correlate only too well, 
And you'll see a common theme that keeps coming up here. The, in, in another book that I talked about here a few months ago, uh, The Aquarian Gospel of Jesus the Christ, in the beginning it talked about the firstborn. And the firstborn was created out of the love of mother and father God. Okay? So the firstborn was, they called him Amelius, which was in the Garden of Eden. Amelius came down, never manifested into this solid body. Okay? Well, we're talking eons ago. But here he was, out of love, wanting to help those that had incarnated and couldn't get back to the Father. Because there was a time in history where we could travel freely from this body. Almost like, I think of it like Star Trek. Do you remember the movie Star Trek? Remember when they'd go in that thing and they'd psh, beam me up, Scotty? Beam me down, Scotty? We could do that. Maybe that's where the deep subconscious mind thought that up. I don't know. The next one was Adam. Whoa. Long time ago. The next one was Enoch. Enoch was another one of those characters without mother or father. And in the Bible it says he walked with God. I and mean, that's how the scripture says it. He walked with him. The next one, Hermes. Great philosopher, great writer, great thinker. The next one after Hermes, here comes Melchizedek. Yeah. And he was neither with mother nor father. Then Joseph, Joshua, Asaph, one of the writers of the book of Psalms. He was King David's um, writer, chief writer. If you look in the book of Psalms, you'll see his name in there quite a bit as the writer of those Psalms. Uh, Jeshua, another name for Jesus. And then Zen. The, how do you say it? Zoroaster or Zoroaster? Zoroaster. Okay. Zen was the father of Zor, Zoroaster, which brought in a whole other religion study. And then from Zen came Jesus, his early life, his ministry, his death, and his resurrection. But here through this whole book, it's written in, in a logical sequence why somebody came, kept coming back, and that was this master soul, the one we call today Jesus. But he had many lives and many times came to help. So, um, Pluto said that, that the, uh, and Pluto was a great believer of reincarnation uh, many years ago, but he said that the soul cycled every thousand years. Maybe not so, so true based on some of these readings like with Bridie Murphy and etc. But each religion teaches that this actually happens every 625 to 1200 years. So maybe we're in that time period again, I don't know. Maybe somebody's already come and gone. Could be the Dalai Lama, I don't know. But interestingly enough, um, there's hope here. My, my main message today was to say to you, hey, whatever it is, it is. You have complete control over this destiny. You chose to be here this morning, I thank you for that. Yeah, I thank you. I hope you got something out of what I said, and I'm going to leave you with love and light. Namaste.